Are you tired of struggling with your mixes, feeling overwhelmed by the sheer amount of information that's out there? Digging through all that content takes time and effort that I'm sure you'd much rather spend on actually mixing songs, which is the exact reason why I've broken all of this information down into eight simple mixing tips I wished I knew when I was first starting out. Even by applying just one of these tips, you'll level up your mixing workflow in no time. So be sure to watch until the end of the video so you can get the very best out of your mixes. But before we start, if you want to get your mixes to sound like professional songs, I recommend checking out Sage Audio's Mixing and Mastering membership. As a member, I have to say the experience is incredible. Just for signing up, you receive 10 free mastered songs per month with your own dedicated mastering engineer, unlimited mixing feedback, and access to Sage Audio University for in-depth mixing and mastering courses. But more on that at the end of the video. Tip one is about automation and the power it has to turn your dull, lifeless mixers into something much more dynamic and exciting to listen to. It's sure to grab a listener's attention straight away when used correctly. The number one problem I hear in more amateur mixers is the lack of dynamics, or more simply, just very static mixers that never move in any significant way. The best mixers always start out with a well-written and thought-out arrangement. If you're lucky enough to get sent something like this, then you should have a pretty easy job on your hands. However, problems arise when this key part of the equation is missing. But that doesn't mean that you'll never be able to make great sounding mixers, even if the arrangement isn't quite there. In fact, it simply means that automation will now become your best friend. I think people tend to overlook automation, thinking of it only as a way to make slight volume adjustments throughout a mix. But the fact that you can pretty much automate any parameter of any plugin, fader, pan knob, and so on in your DAW is really powerful. And once you start understanding this more and using it to your advantage, it'll level up the sound of your mixes 10 times over. Take for instance this crescendo section of my mix. Without any automation, it doesn't really grab your attention in the way I'd like it to, as you can hear for yourself. To help fix this, I've added a whole bunch of automation to really max out this section. So there's some volume rides on the drum kit, along with automating some EQ filters and mix knobs to really bring this section to life. So let's take a listen to that same section once more, but this time with all the automation applied. Tip two is to avoid balanced mixers. Now that may sound like a somewhat controversial thing to say, especially when given how much emphasis is placed on getting a well-balanced mix in almost every video you see online. But what I really mean is, don't just get your mix to a nice balanced place and then think that your job is done. Really, that's just the start of the mixing process. Once you get to that stage, this is where you need to unbalance certain elements to really make them jump out to the listener. So this might mean riding the drum room mics up during a big fill to give extra dimension to this section. Or alter in the balance of your bass to help this stand out when needed. This ties in heavily with my first tip, so take what you learned from that section about automation and apply it to this advice to really get the most out of these first two points. Tip three is to create a large varied folder full of all your favorite mixers to reference. I'm sure you're already familiar with the term reference mixers, but I think a lot of people tend to underutilize or misuse this piece of advice. So I'd encourage you to take your time listening to your favorite records and picking out mixers that you love for one reason or another. It's a good idea to get a wide variety of sounds and styles, so no matter what you're working on, you'll always have something similar you can reference to to keep your mix on track. Tip four is to mix at varying volumes throughout the mixing process. I see some people suggest to always mix super quiet or really loud, but I think the best way is really a balance of both. If you only listen at low volumes, there's elements of the mix that you're just not going to be able to hear. Listening at low volumes is great for checking that your focal elements stand out, even when turned down quietly, but by only doing this, you're going to miss out on more subtle details of the mix, along with not being able to accurately gauge the low end. At low volumes, our ears will make out the higher frequencies more easily. So getting a balanced low end can become very tricky if you never turn up the levels of your headphones or monitors. And on the flip side of that, if you only mix at loud volumes, you'll quickly experience ear fatigue, along with risking potential damage to your hearing if you're doing this for prolonged periods of time. There's definitely moments of the mixing process when you'll want to crank up the volume, but try to do this conservatively so that you can mix for longer and not risk any damage to your hearing. Tip five is that you don't need to start every single mix from scratch. 
This is something I thought was always necessary to do, and if I didn't do this, I felt like I was somehow cheating the process. Opening a blank DAW session can be really uninspiring. It's similar to that feeling of staring at a blank page when you know you have a long email or essay to type out. So if you create a mixing template to work from, not only will this instantly inspire you the moment you load it up, but you'll also save a lot of time by not having to create new tracks, load up your favourite plugin chains and reroute the entire session from the ground up. Another huge time saver here would be if you were mixing an entire album's worth of songs. If you mix one track first and then create a template based on this first mix, you'll massively speed up the entire process as you can just import the multi-tracks from each song into this newly created template and then adjust your levels accordingly for each new song. Assuming you're dealing with similar sound sources throughout the record, you'll essentially only have to do one proper mix and everything else will just be small adjustments for each song. If you found this video helpful so far and would like to see more mixing tips and tricks, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Tip 6 is about how the perfect mix doesn't really exist. What makes a good mix versus a bad mix is so subjective. What may sound great to me could sound terrible to you and vice versa. So whenever you're mixing, whether it's just for yourself or a client, the thing to keep in mind is how does this sound to the people that matter the most. And those people would be, for instance, a client you're working with. Make sure you know exactly what their expectations are first before moving a single fader. Reference their demo mix heavily throughout the mixing process as this will give you the best idea of what they want each section to sound like even if they lack the technical knowledge and experience to describe this to you. And if you're mixing for yourself, well then this will all be down to your own personal taste and preferences. Maybe you really like the sound of warm organic mixes with as little processing as you can get away with. Or maybe you love the sound of ultra clean polished mixes and you want to make things sound as tight as possible. None of these are right or wrong, they're just different approaches and personal preferences, which is something we all have. Tip 7 is to use reverbs sparingly. Reverb is one of those effects we all love when first starting out, because it makes everything sound more interesting and three-dimensional. The downside of this is that it can easily wash out your mixes if you're not careful. Overusing this effect is a common beginner mistake that I hear all too often, which would sound something like this. Another reverb related issue I hear in a lot of mixes is when too many different types of reverb has been used within one session. Generally speaking, you want to try and use the same few reverbs in your mix so that you can create a more realistic sense of space for your tracks to occupy. If you think about how instruments are recorded, you're not often going to record different parts of a drum kit in completely different sounding rooms and then repeat this process for bass, guitar, vocals and so on. But this is essentially what's happening when you apply an excessive number of different types of reverbs to, for example, a single drum kit. Unless, say, you're going for a specific creative effect, try to limit the different types of reverbs you're using in your mix, along with only adding them to necessary tracks. I personally only like using reverbs for a couple instances in my mix. One would be on the snare drum to give it a wider, more dynamic sound, and another would be on background tracks, like backing vocals or acoustic instrumentation. Typically, I like all my focal elements to stay up front in the mix, so it's rare that I'll ever use reverb even on lead vocals. Tip 8 is that plugin settings you advise to use are typically tailored to that particular situation at hand, which I think is a massive oversight a lot of people make. When you watch videos or read through your favourite mixing articles, you'll often be given particular settings to use for different scenarios. And while these can be really helpful, it's also important to keep in mind that your audio sources are going to be totally different to the person making the video or writing the blog, both in frequency content and dynamic range. So it's always best to take this advice more theoretically, rather than apply the exact same settings and then be disappointed when things don't sound exactly like the examples given. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to get your mixers to sound like professional songs, I encourage you to check out Sage Audio's Mixing and Mastering membership. As a member, I have to say the experience is incredible. Just for signing up, you receive 10 free mastered songs per month with your own dedicated mastering engineer, unlimited mixing feedback, and access to Sage Audio University mixing and mastering courses, which include start to finish walkthrough sessions for various genres and 35 multi track sessions for hands on practice. This platform is supported by their thriving community and tight knit network of audio engineers. Every day, I see and hear great wins in the membership from both new and seasoned engineers, noticing a huge improvement in their mixes and masters after joining. Right now, you can join the membership with a 70% lifetime discount, bringing the cost down to just $15 per month. So join today and start creating mixes that sound like professional songs.